This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be on my 22nd place ARG Circuit Series Atlanta Performapal Zodiac deck profile. Now, I went into this event with literally zero testing. Um, well, the only testing I had was the testing that I had done from knowing the combos and knowing how much I like to play this deck online, but I had no testing in the current format in terms of context of uh, what I should be expecting, what like card choice trends and stuff were. And I didn't know that ARG Atlanta was happening, and me being an Atlanta resident, obviously I'm going to be trying to attend these events if they are in my backyard, essentially. But I didn't know the event was a thing until literally like Wednesday, late Wednesday or late Thursday, and then I didn't commit to going to it until about 7 p.m. Friday night with the event taking place on Saturday. Now, it was eight rounds of Swiss. I ended up losing two rounds. I went six and two, and I ended up finishing 22nd place. They only cut to top 16 for prize playoff um, in ARGs, and so it made me kind of upset because the only reason I was 22nd place and not in the top 16 was because of the fact that my tiebreakers were poorer than other people's. Like, it wasn't my fault that I lost to these people. It was their fault for not continuing to win that caused me the uh, the chance at getting top. Which means that I got this cheesy little mat that just says top 32 down here in the corner when I could have been playing for, you know, I could have at least gotten $100 or so for just finishing in the top 16 and then could have played for higher amounts of cash prizes. So, kind of irritated me a little bit. But anyway, uh, I liked this deck enough to play it. I wanted to play this deck. Uh, this deck was something I just, I mean, I was last minute, you know, I, I last minute made the decision to go to this event. So uh, this deck was obviously the thing that I was going to play because it's what I was the most well-versed with and what I felt the most uh, comfortable with. But anyway, uh, the main deck was 40 cards. There's three Perform Pal Pendulum Sorcerers, three Perform Pal Skull Corbat Jokers. Uh, this card's great at three. Uh, the only big problem I've been seeing is with this card at three, it's a conflicting normal summon since you do have five Rat Peers and this is your only other good normal summon. You've got eight normal summons in the deck uh, now and they can sometimes conflict, but... Um, I did find myself putting it in the scale a couple times just to Pendulum Summon Pendulum Sorcerer. Like, after I did, like, a Zoo Normal Summon and, like, it got stopped or something, uh, the, uh, the continuation of play was well and truly accepted, um, and appreciated. But, one Good Turtle, two Lizard Draw, one Silver Claw, and one Part Naga are the other two Performer Pal scales that I played. Uh, specifically, these cards are for assisting and attacking over Masterpiece, essentially. Um, Silver Claw was kind of shitty. I don't think I'll be playing it in a deck ever again. I feel like this card was probably better suited as, like, Performer Pal King Bear, because I chose not to run that card, because I don't think it's necessarily that good. Uh, but there were some times where I kind of wanted King Bear in my deck, but it was still capable of, you know, play otherwise. Um, but Part Naga was great. If only for the fact that it's searchable off King of the Feralimps alongside Lizard Draw. Uh, but it's a low scale. Like, that was actually the most relevant part about it. And, like, attacking over Masterpiece with it was cool. Making game shots with it by pumping up a Dryden by, like, 1,200 because I had two Performer Pal scales. And then, like, a, so a Sorcerer and Skullcrabat Joker on the field. Like, stuff like that was kind of cool. Uh, but otherwise, like, this card was insane. Uh, Silver Claw is probably getting cut because it was literally never really good in its applications for what I was trying to get it to do. But... Carrying on, for other Pendulums, we had Luster Pendulum, and we had three Guiding Ariadne, because we're playing the Counter Trap Suite, and then the last Pendulum monster in the deck is one copy of Dragoons of Draconia. Now, Guiding Ariadne uh, was really interesting. I don't think I'd play three of it ever again. The Counter Traps were really good. Um, I think I'd play two of it at most. Um, it was a good low scale, but the deck already has a lot of like low scales, uh, so that's not really a huge problem, and like, your main combo searches one, at least, in the form of the Dragoons. Um, but Ariadne was great for one specific reason, and that is against my opponent's Dridents, normal summon Ariadne and attack the Drident. <laughs> Unless they have double Whiptail, they're almost always letting the Drident die because if they pop Ariadne, that gives me a search for a counter trap. And like that was the most insane thing is that I would summon Ariadne, attack into their Drident, and they would just let the Drident die. <laughs> like, that was the biggest fucking insane thing. Um, like, it was absolutely ridiculous seeing it, uh, seeing that be the case. So I think two is probably still in order. 
Um, it's probably still fine to play two of it just to, you know, give you some accessibility into the counter traps. But I think three was too much. I was seeing it too often. I was drawing it with the counter traps, um, which was kind of agitating. There was a few things that kind of made that kind of problematic. But anyway, uh, for the Zoo Engine, two copies of Zoo Rap here. Three copies of Whiptail and then the one Ram Ram. No Thoroughblade. Rep here Whiptail by itself or Rep here Barrage or like Tinky Whiptail. Any combination of those cards automatically outs things like Masterpiece. So I wanted to play Triple Whiptail definitely because Rep here, any combination of normal summoning Rep here and then getting to a Whiptail in any way, shape, or form automatically outs Masterpiece. They either pop a card or you're attacking over it and they don't have any say in the matter. Uh, it's just a play line that you go down if you're very well versed with Zoo, you know how to do it. Uh, but so it either baits the masterpiece pop in an um, in like a very like unoptimal time for the opponent And then you just get to pendulum all over them and you get to do things like you know part naga boost things uh, Put pendulum sorcerer in the scale to boost what you pendulum summoned all that sort of nonsense uh, But or or you're just attacking over the masterpiece and outing it um, In that way, so I wanted to play a zoo engine that was at least this big I at least wanted rap here's and ram ram for the normal summon play uh, but I wanted to play a big zoo engine because, you know, when this deck doesn't do pendulum things, being able to fall back on the zoo engine is still very much fine. Uh, but the fact is that, like, all these engines are very synergetic with each other because of the fact that you've got the zoo engine that you're making plays with, and then at the end of the day, you're pendulum summoning level fours and on the back side of your play. And so that allows you to constantly be able to make rank fours like Emerald and stuff, even if your zoo plays get stopped, and that's, like, the biggest thing. But uh, the last monsters in the deck were hand traps, one max C and uh, triple ash blossom and joy spring. Uh, I didn't see any of these all day, basically, except for, like, one or two instances. So, I mean, I can't really tell you if they were good or not. I was literally just beating my opponent with zoo with zoo cards and uh, pendulum cards every time i saw ash blossom and maxi it was usually in my opponent's hand so sucks to suck but that was uh like 26 monsters uh for spells there's 10 of them there's triple duelist alliance and one pendulum rising for the awesome saucy plays uh, involving your zoo stuff into pendulum rising uh pendulum rising is actually just like really really strong because of what the zoo deck like the zoo engine allows you to do specifically with shock and nine um, even if you just open something like Whiptail alongside Duel Strike Alliance uh, Pendulum Rising, that's still fantastic because that still allows you to normal summon Whiptail, put Broad Bull on top of it, detach to search for Dragoons or Draconia, scale your Dragoons, um, activate Alliance if that was the card in your hand, get Pendulum Rising, put Chaka Nine on top of your Broad Bull, Chaka Nine back the uh, the Whiptail, and then you Pendulum Rising the Whiptail away for Sorcerer, and then you're just like 100% in the clear because you're still doing a similar combo string. Uh, for what you were trying to do beforehand anyway so like it's really strong in this deck specifically i don't think this deck is going to be really good um, or playable at any future events unfortunately i feel like this was the event for this deck to be good at uh but uh i don't know we'll have to see uh the, i'll have to take a look at the magician cards and see if it makes this deck better or if it's just as better as its own entity but anyway three copies of zoo barrage and three copies of tanky uh the main reason i wanted to play more zoo cards was so i could play more of these types of cards tanky obviously because you can get dragoons with it straight uh, but then like barrage is just really good extenders this deck has a lot of really good extension power because of the fact that you have you know, you have your rep peers that you can summon, you've got your barrages that are the extension to your normal summon plays, and then you have pendulums that you can just pendulum summon in, a, in addition to your barrage and your normal summon. So, like, that's that's actually just big. But carrying on, that was the 10 spells for traps. There are four of them. They are the four counter traps, triple strike and uh, warning uh, to go with the Ariadne, obviously, basically, just to, uh, just to be good in that regard. Uh, I think the deck was really good. Uh, I think the deck was performing really well every game that I played that I wasn't just getting unfaired in, like my opponent having max C so I couldn't really play my turn out, or like my opponent just doing something like normal summon Fossil Dino, which was something that happened to me, um, and then keeping me from outing it. Like if I wasn't getting floodgated out of the game, every game, whether they were slow and grindy or quick and fast paced, was very overwhelmingly in my favor, um, and like that's, that's what I built the deck to do. I feel like the deck was really strong in terms of how it operated, but... Uh, for the extra deck, one copy of Ignister, one King of the Feralimps, one Tornado Dragon, double Digusto Emerald, and an Abyss Dweller. These are all my non-Zoo cards that were in the extra deck. And then for the Zoo cards, I played uh, two Dridents, two Broad Bulls, two Chaka Nines, Tiger Mortar, Borbo, and Hammer Kong. Now, you could cut ch uh, the uh, second Chaka Nine for another card in your extra deck, uh, whether it's uh, like another Fringe Rank 4 or a third Digusto Emerald or something. Um... It's really up to you, uh, but these were all really good. Um, having two of Broadbull and Drynet specifically 
uh, made it really easy for me to play out like grindy games where like I wasn't investing a lot of resources into pendulum summoning. I was just trying to do a lot of things with zoo cards to whittle my opponent's resources down and then pendulum summon for game. Um, like that was that was the biggest benefit that we had in uh, in that regard. But side deck that I played for the event, I played three kaiju's, all of a different name. Um, these could all just be gamma seals. I just played three different names so that if I drew two of them, I could give my opponent the smallest one. Um, there's really no reasoning behind it. Um, I was thinking about playing Interrupt to Kaiju Slumber, but then I scratched it off my deck list. Uh, and so uh, these like were the names that would have been used with Slumber. Um, I would have played three names and two Slumber, but I just ended up not playing Slumber. I just played Raigeki instead. Uh, but I still just did this so that I could you know, give my opponent Gamma Seal and Special Summon Jizakiru, like things like that. Um, that was all that really mattered. It doesn't matter which one you give them and how big they are, because at the end of the day, your deck summons Dryden't. And your deck is a Performer Pal deck, which is very good at getting high attack ceilings on its own anyway. So there is that. But then, I decided to draw Logbirds. log birds. I feel like these should have been Ghost Ogres, honestly. Um, and I actually kind of wish the Ghost Ogre was in my main deck. Um, along with my body as a shield. Like, I probably should have just played 42 cards. And played, like, uh, like cut the Silver Claw, cut one of the Ariadnes, played two Ghost Ogre, and played two my body as a shield in a 42 card deck. That's probably what I should have played in the deck to make it overall better for, uh, for uh, the tournament itself. Definitely wouldn't have lost to as much bullshit as I did. Uh, but Raigeki is in the side. Um, I got raigeki like crazy the entire tournament. It was pissing me off. Like, I got raigeki three times in one match. Um, and it was the most irritating thing in the world. Uh, but Double Twin Twister, this deck plays a lot with uh, a lot of free cards. Uh, because of the way that the Pendulum uh, the pendulum Zoo like, combos operate, you end up with like a plus fives and plus sixes. Uh, so like Twin Twister is a perfectly fine card because you're going to be you know getting cards back if you Twin Twister early or if you have this first turn you're going to be getting extra cards and then those extra cards can be utilized with Twin Twister. So there is that. Uh, but two copies of Unending Nightmare. This was specifically for like if anyone was playing Metal Foe Zoo or anything like that. I did side it in going first against like Draco Zoo because you know you hit their barrages, you hit their uh, diagrams, you just don't really let them play. Uh, and then I played three copies of Full Force Virus because you can summon King of the Feralimps in every single one of your first turn combos. It replaces itself with a Pendulum Scale, which is a you know extender in the form of like Lizard Draw or Part Naga. And then you're able to just set Full Force Virus and literally blow out like Zoo, Zoo Draco, all that. The only card this doesn't hit in the Zoo Draco in the Zoo decks is Ram Ram um, in the, in the uh, hand. But that's fine because you don't want to hit that card anyway because Full Force Virus destroys. And that would trigger Ram Ram's Graveyard Effect. So it literally all works out perfectly. Uh, but two copies of Dimensional Barrier are the last two cards in my side deck. Uh, now, as far as what I would do as far as side decking again, I'd probably make all these Kaijus Gamma Seal. These Droll Locks would probably be Ghost Ogres, or I'd find a way to put Ghost Ogre in my main deck. Um, Full Force Virus, on paper, it was great. Um, I resolved it once or twice, and it was really cool when it resolved. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like these would just be better off as other cards, like a third Dimensional Barrier, a third Unending Nightmare, um, and then like maybe finding room to put Raigeki in the main deck and putting like two Kaiju Slumbers in, that, in the side deck to go with the three Kaijus that are here. Like, I feel like they could have just been better cards. Because this is, like, the easily the most situational card in my side deck. Uh, because of the fact that, um, that like, it requires me to be able to make King of the Feralimps. So, if I brick and draw this card, um, or if, like, not even if I brick, but if I'm, if I open a hand that doesn't make King of the Feralimps well, and I drew this card as well, um, I'm going to be dedicating my play string into a suboptimal play to make that Feralimps, get a resource back, try and get lucky with lizard draw draws or whatever, and then set full force virus and hope to get lucky there uh, with my opponent having a loaded hand for it. Um, so like there's that. Now there was one instance where my opponent max seed me turn one. Um, and so I just, I did the, I did a really extensive play with the least amount of special summons I could think of giving him. I ended up giving him like six draws off max C. He was playing pure zoo. Uh, but I only did that because I had full force virus in my hand. I made king of the Feralimps, and I was like, I need to make, give him the least amount of draws possible so that he doesn't like ghost ogre me or ghost ash me or whatever he doesn't draw those cards luckily it worked out and i was able to set full force and then i flipped it during his turn after he activated the tenki um and got literally like a rat pierre and three whiptails out of his hand uh and it was pretty insane but otherwise the card was pretty pretty like lackluster so these part these probably wouldn't be included in my side deck again it'd be you know more of these types of cards like dimensional barrier even something like magic deflector um, something like that. Like that's that. Those are definitely cards that I feel like should have been in my side deck. Um, 
Like, <laughs> even things like My Body as a Shield. Like, I feel like that should have been in my side deck or main deck, but it just wasn't. Um, and that was a big issue because I was getting, like, board wiped a lot. But it's fine because if you're getting board wiped with this deck, normally you're able to reestablish because of the fact that if they board wipe your, your field, right, you still have, like, five extra cards in hand and two pendulum scales and a, some pendulum cards in your extra deck. So it usually ends up in your favor anyway because of the fact that you're still up like four cards even after they regekied you. So it's not really that big of an issue or that big of a problem because like I was getting regekied and dark hold all day and then next turn I would just put it all back. Um, I, it, it wasn't that big of a, of, like a, of a threat essentially, but there are you know problems that were caused by it. But yeah, so that was the deck that I played at ARG Atlanta. Like I said, I feel like this was probably the best event to play this deck. I don't think that... Um, I think the Magician cards might be better than it. The new Magician Pendulums. I need to look into them a little bit more in detail. I know they come out literally, like, tomorrow. Um, I still haven't read, like, any of them in, in like, any sort of extensive way or theoried with them that heavily because I just wanted to wait for them to come out and have the cards in my hand because that's how I do my best, you know, theory work. But... Other than that, that was the list that I played, and I feel like I could have done a lot better if I had a little bit more preparation time, or if I'd put a tiny bit more playtesting into the deck, all that sort of nonsense. But whatever, 22nd place and finishing X2 is still fine, um, as far as, like, a result, I guess. I fucking hell. I get this cheesy Norden mat with magnet warriors on it that makes literally no sense. I hate this mat. It looks horrible to me, but whatever anyway as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and all that sort of nonsense links as always are in the description of my facebook and patreon pages if you want to support the channel directly then patreon is the best way to do so if you want to get some insider access into how the channel runs in terms of voting on what order videos go up in what you want to see next all that sort of stuff then the patreon feed is something you'd like to have interest in access to which is open at the minimum Patreon reward tier of $1, so if you want to support the channel in a small way and also get some insider access into how it operates and some insider voice into how it operates and uploads, then definitely go check that out. But if you want to get access to the private Discord server where me and a few others are constantly talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, anime, other things, all that sort of nonsense, and if you want to you know, get some helpful advice, just chat with people, then that is the $5 reward tier as well. If you are interested and you want to support the channel and get some good helpful advice or just a place to vent frustrations about the game or whatever. We talk about how shitty the game is a lot of the time in, in the chat. So all of those things are available to you. Check out the Patreon page if you want to support the channel directly, basically. But other than that, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show support for the content and all that sort of stuff. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I'd love to welcome you on board to this little dysfunctional family based around this channel and all that sort of stuff. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching, guys. I'm really tired right now. Thanks for your time as usual, and take care. I will see you in the next video.